Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today we've got something very, very special. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you may have been following a mod, which is Mikolov's massive Institute weapon overhaul. Well, the wait is finally over. Mikolov has released their gigantic weapon pack featuring over 30 new weapons to flesh out the Institute faction. And it does a whole lot more than just that. Not only are you going to get all these weapons, but also a ton of new lore and gameplay features that are a whole lot of fun, as well as some explosives and other aid items that I wasn't expecting to see in this mod, but I am happy are also a part of it. Now, before we get started, this is going to be a bit of a different video as typically we cover about one weapon at a time. So covering 30 is a little bit more difficult. So we're not going to be able to go into as much detail unless we want this video to be over two hours long. And quite frankly, I don't. So let's talk about some of the basics of the mod first, and then we'll try to break things down a little bit further as we go along. For starters, there are two main versions of this mod. There is a light version and the full version. Now, obviously, the full version is what is intended to be played with, but I'll explain both because they're very, very different from each other. The light version of this mod is going to add all of the new weapons into the Institute leveled lists, and that's essentially it. You can also craft them at two new crafting benches, one of which is the Institute Fabrication Station, and one is the Jury Rigging Station, as there are two different classes of weapons in this mod. Of course, there are the actual Institute weapons, and then there are also the Jury Rigged versions of these weapons, which will make a whole lot more sense in the full version. But in terms of the light version, you can just craft these outright at these crafting stations with no other requirements, or of course you can find them on the Institute and Railroad leveled lists. The Institute will carry the Institute weapons, and the Railroad will carry the jury-rigged versions of these weapons. Now, in this particular instance, I think I would be running the light version because I do have a game that is in progress. The full version requires a new save as it does touch a lot of things that need to sort of be implemented from the very beginning. So if you're not trying to start a new game, I'd highly recommend the light version. You're going to get a lot of the cool features, but just not quite everything. But when you are ready to start a new game, or maybe you're going to start one already, I'd highly recommend checking out the full version as you're going to get exactly what Mikolov intended and some really, really cool features that expand on the Institute lore and how the weapons work for that faction. Now, in the full version, the Institute weapons are going to be a bit more powerful and a bit harder to obtain as a result of that. Now, in the full version of this mod, each weapon is going to have a biometric scanner that makes it so only members of the Institute can actually use these. Meaning, if you want to be able to use these weapons, you're going to need to join the Institute. I'm just kidding, there's actually other ways to do it. If you kill members of the Institute, they have a chance of dropping one of their weapons, but either the weapon is going to self-destruct as a means to not let this technology get into the hands of regular old wastelanders, or if by chance it doesn't self-destruct, it still will be locked by that biometric scanner, and you have one of two options. You can either try to decode that lock and use the weapon as is, or you can try to jury rig it into a totally new weapon using the existing technology on it. And that is how we get into the two schools of thought for the full version. There are several magazines located around the wasteland that will allow you to get recipes to either reverse engineer these weapons into a new jury rigged weapon or allow you to decrypt the software and break into the weapon and use it as is. There are a handful of these magazines located all around the Commonwealth, usually themed around Brotherhood of Steel or railroad locations, the people who actually want to break into these weapons and get use of their technology. When it comes to cracking that lock and opening up that biometric scanner, there are a handful of magazines that allow you to unlock different tiers of weapons that get better and better. As far as jury rigging goes, there's only one magazine, and once you've got that, you can craft any of the jury rigged weaponry. But even once you've unlocked these recipes, you still have to go about crafting them, and you don't do that at a simple old chemistry station. If you want to craft a jury rigged weapon, you have to go to the jury rigging station. There actually is one located over at the railroad HQ, or you can craft one over at your settlement once you've unlocked the magazine. As for the Institute weapons themselves, if you want to unlock them or craft them, you can use the crafting station located in the Institute if you're a member of the faction, or you can craft the crafting station over at your settlement. One thing I will note, the big difference between the jury rigged and regular Institute weapons is of course the jury rigged weapons have their own interesting style that look like a kit bash monstrosity of a bunch of different pieces, but also they have a different projectile and it does a little bit more damage against Gen 1 and Gen 2 synths, which I think is pretty neat. 
Before we move on to every single weapon in this mod, I do want to mention that while you're at these crafting stations, you'll find some other goodies there as well, including some Institute versions of every grenade in the game, as well as a couple of Stealth Boys. There is an Institute Stealth Boy and a Railroad Stealth Boy added in this mod, which I think is really, really cool. The new Institute Stealth Boy is going to perform much better than the vanilla one, and of course the Railroad version is a bit of a hybrid and performs somewhere in the middle. Alright, now that you know how to get all of these weapons, let's talk about what's actually included in this mod and sit tight because like I said, there are over 30 new weapons. So, first of all, we have some pretty interesting stuff including the Institute Pen. It's, it's a pen. Yeah. This is actually carried by Institute scientists in the full version, so when you attack the Institute, you may see some scientists trying to defend themselves with what they have on them, which in some cases is sadly just a pen. We also have the Institute Laser. This is essentially the first generation of Institute weaponry. It is the regular old AEP-7 rifle, except now with a nice snazzy Institute paint job. Of course, though, in the lore added in this mod, these get upgraded to some much nicer models. Then we have the Institute Beam Cutter. This is going to be a cool new melee weapon that allows you to utilize lasers or plasma to cut through heavy materials. And of course, you can use it in combat as well. We also have the Institute Defense Knuckles. Some pretty interesting little unarmed weapons that actually do laser and energy damage. They're pretty interesting. We also have the Institute Field Knife. This is going to be a nice little extendable knife. A good melee option that's different than the regular old Institute Baton. We also have the Institute Personal Pistol, a teensy little laser weapon that I think looks really cool. It makes a lot of sense for the Institute and Institute scientists. Rather than lugging around a big weapon, they've got something a little bit more compact. Then we have the Institute AEW Mark I. This is known as the Advanced Energy Weapon and is a step up from the regular old AEP-7s. This is the first full-fledged rifle that the Institute created in the lore of this mod and actually does get some upgrades later as we move down the weapons list. We then have the Institute EM Covert Pistol. This is going to be an electromagnetic pistol which does fire a ballistic projectile and is nice and compact and I believe has a sort of built-in suppressor. We then have the Institute Assassin's Sword, much like the field knife from before, but much, much longer and packs a bit more damage. Then we have the Institute AEW Mark II. This is the final version of the AEW, the best the Institute has to offer, and is the new standard infantry weapon. We then also have an Institute Plasma Gun. This is actually one of the standalone releases that came out before, the Institute's answer to plasma-based weaponry, and this thing looks really, really cool. Then we have the Institute Pew 90 SMG, something that looks an awful lot like a P90, except it is now the Pew 90. It is a laser weapon, a personal energy weapon of sorts, and this thing is really, really cool and is one of the few weapons that features custom animations in this mod. Moving up to the higher tiers of weapons, we have the Institute EM Sniper Rifle. This is an electromagnetic sniper rifle offering a ballistic projectile using 2mm EC as its ammo type. This thing is really, really cool and is often carried by coursers. But if you're looking for something a little bit more close range, we have the regular old Institute EM Rifle, sort of the Institute answer to an assault rifle, again using ballistic projectiles, but still being a bit more high tech than your standard wasteland weaponry. Then we have the Institute Plasma Defender, a little bit redundant and pretty similar to the Institute Plasma Rifle from before, but this one is based off of the Cult Plasma Defender from Fallout Lore, so I kind of have a sweet spot for it. We then have the Institute Heavy Assault Laser, essentially an Institute LMG. This does use laser projectiles and it was actually one of the standalone releases we saw before, but has since gotten some major updates and a little bit of a visual overhaul. And this is one that I think is really, really cool and a lot of fun and makes these enemies actually a bit more difficult in combat. Now in the final tier of weaponry, here are all of the heavy hitters. We have the Institute Heavy Plasma Incinerator, another standalone release that we did check out in the past, and this thing is massive, essentially a BFG for the Institute. We then have the Institute Adaptive Launcher, an Institute missile launcher of sorts, except it doesn't fire just missiles. Given that it is adaptive, it has swappable barrels that allow for a handful of projectiles that you can fire, including missiles, rockets, 40 millimeter grenades, mini nukes, and a few other options. We then have the Institute Lair, the laser-assisted electrical rifle. This is the Institute's take on the wonderful weapon from Fallout New Vegas. Repurposing some of the technology from the big empty, this thing is going to be a cool new electrical option for the Institute. 
And then finally, the Institute Accelerator Cannon. This is a gigantic gigantic shoulder mounted laser weapon that fires a massive energy beam for constant damage and I gotta say I think this might be my favorite weapon in the entire pack there's not really anything quite like this on the Nexus and this weapon is a whole lot of fun and definitely worth picking up this pack for now, that's not all. That's just the standard Institute weapons. We also have a list of unique weapons here that are one of a kind and don't spawn on the leveled lists. First of all, we have the old Institute adaptive pistol. This is going to be a ballistic weapon used by the Institute before they had furthered their technology a little bit and is actually capable of taking a handful of different ammo types from 32 all the way up to 12.7 millimeter and everything in between, offering some really cool adaptability as a handgun. There is even a hidden away upgrade inside the Institute that you can find that will allow this thing to have smart bullets that actually track to enemies, which I think is a really cool reason to find this and pick it up. The next unique is the Institute Accelerator Drill, a massive weapon used to bore through the rock to help create the Institute itself. Of course, when you pick it up, it does work as a pretty functional weapon and a really cool new heavy option for the faction. We then have Jonovich's pen, essentially the same as the regular old pen except it does a bit more damage and has a history of killing quite a few people. Sort of a John Wake reference to those of you who didn't quite get it the first time. Yeah, the next popular media reference is actually the Institute Experimental Phaser, a cool little phaser pistol that is one of a kind. You won't see this on the level list but you can pick it up yourself if you want to be a lore friendly Trekkie. Now that's it for uniques, let's move on to the jury rigged weapons. These are weapons that have been repurposed by people of the wasteland, mostly the railroad, and they have taken the core weapon from the institute and added some kit bash parts to make it function for their purposes. First up we have the jury rigged EM sniper, this is that electromagnetic sniper from earlier with an interesting new aesthetic. We also have the jury rigged adaptive launcher which takes on a totally different look, a mix of whites and reds and the weird missile launcher green offering a totally different weapon that still has that cool adaptive feature of taking several different ammo types. Then we have the jury rigged plasma defender, one of the few weapons here that actually keeps its sort of old design which actually looks pretty dang cool. This is definitely one of the better jury rigged alternatives here. Then we have the jury rigged heavy assault laser, giving a totally different design from the other version, offering an interesting bipod as well as the use of a lot of AEP-7 laser parts. Then the jury rigged EM rifle, which is that electromagnetic assault rifle. This one's pretty interesting because it almost just looks like a regular assault rifle from the game, but with an institute laser in the center. It's a pretty interesting concept, but definitely fits that jury rigged theme. And finally, that leaves the jury rigged AEW, which is the advanced energy weapon, the standard weapon of the Institute, now jury rigged for anybody to use without that biometric scanner. All right, that is every single weapon included in this pack, but there actually is still more to talk about. The first thing is we do need to talk about the locations for all of those uniques mentioned earlier. So for those of you who don't want to hear those, spoiler warning for the next 30 seconds or so. That classic adaptive pistol can actually be found in Fort Hagen where you fight Kellogg. The Institute Phaser can be found inside the Institute in the Advanced Systems area. The Mining Drill can also be found in the Institute as you head towards the old FEV lab. And the Jonovich Pen can be found in the Institute Director's Quarters on a desk near Sean's computer. Alright, now one of the last things we need to talk about is the elephant in the room for a big mob like this, the requirements. This mod only has one requirement and that is munitions. Munitions, for those of you who don't know, is a mod that adds some of the old Fallout ammo types back into Fallout 4. This includes things like microfusion cells, small energy cells, and electron charge packs, all of which are utilized in this mod for the various energy weapons. Smaller weapons will use small energy cells and bigger weapons will use microfusion cells and of course electron charge packs for weapons that are suitable for that. Additionally in this mod with that adaptive missile launcher we get some other cool ammo usage like the 40mm and 25mm grenades as well as the small rockets offering some cool explosive projectiles for the institute. For those of you who are still against munitions I don't really understand it. it's an easy to install mod that allows you to enable and disable ammo types at a whim. It's very simple and definitely a good requirement for this mod allowing for ammo types that make a whole lot of sense for this pack. That way every single weapon in this mod doesn't just use fusion cells. Sadly with how integral munitions is though I don't think there is going to be an optional file for a non-munitions version so you're gonna have to buckle up and take munitions if you want to use this pack at all. 
Now, the very last thing to talk about is a couple of optional files available for this mod, one of which is going to add cyber out animations to all of the melee weapons, offering some cool new animations for those swords in this pack. Additionally, there is a patch for this mod and my Institute Pulse Rifle, which will add a biometric scanner to it and allow it to work the same way all of these Institute weapons work, where you actually have to take it over and either unlock it or jury rig it to be able to use it. As of right now, that is the only patch I know of for an extra Institute weapon, but hopefully we'll see some more in the future for any other Institute weapons floating around out there. With that though, I think that covers just about everything. There are a ton of weapons, we're obviously not going to do damage tests for each of these or a look at all of the attachments, just know there is a lot of customization available in this mod, different upgrades to the receivers and capacitors, as well as scopes, muzzles, magazines, you name it, it's there. As far as damage is concerned, in my testing, each of these weapons is pretty well balanced. Again, there are different tiers of weapons. Some are meant for the early game and some are meant for the late game, and they all perform as such in a pretty balanced way. Of course, you throw on the right attachments and the right perks, and they'll perform a whole lot better for you than they do for the enemies. With that, though, I think that's just about everything. A wonderful new mod that I'd highly recommend checking out. This is probably going to be the new go-to mod for upgrading the Institute, at least as far as weaponry is concerned. Pair this with your favorite Institute armor mods, and they're a whole new faction with a whole lot to offer. Honestly, more weapons than are available for most factions, or even just in the vanilla game. So props to Mikolov. This has been a huge project and a really large undertaking, and it's definitely motivating me to get my attachment pack finished. With that, if you want to try this mod out, it will be linked down in the description. I highly recommend that you do. And be sure to give Mikolov a shout out in the comments. Let him know how much you enjoyed the mod as this was a gigantic effort by him and definitely took a whole lot of time and was definitely worth the wait. With that, rounding this out, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. It really helps out the channel and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons as always for supporting every single video. And of course, a very special thank you to Backbone, Freedom, Glasma, Indecisive Wolf, Logan Rigmaiden, Madly Matt, Mikerhan, Moodlet Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Sterling, Timmy76, Youth RC, and Voider for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!